Hey y'all, it's Mr. Reardon. It is, what is it? It's Monday night. It is 1017 and tonight's screencast is brought to you by Diet Coke. Diet Coke when you need a little pick-me-up but you don't want a pot of coffee. All right, I want to do one thing, actually two things in this screencast. Really, I'm calling this Evolution Unit Opening Remarks Part 1, which lets you know there's a Part 2 coming in a few moments, but that'll be a different video. I really want to do two things for you guys tonight. Number one, I want us to think about what we're going to do over the next eight weeks as we prepare for our for our uh, last unit, which is on evolution, and also as we prepare for our two big tests. So I really, you really need to be thinking about this course in kind of two ways. One, learning new material and beginning to review uh, old material, and secondarily, really starting to focus on your end of course assessments and being great in May and I'm gonna try and do my best to help you do that. The second thing I want to talk about in this screencast is really sort of the nuts and bolts of how I'm going to teach this evolution unit uh, to keep myself on track and also for you guys that may miss class because of band trips or college visits or you get sick or whatever you're gonna know what it is we're trying to do and then also while we're doing it but uh, before we get into the how, how I'm gonna run this unit let's talk a little bit about uh, what's coming your way so first things first let's focus on the present let's think about this new this this uh, last unit of the year and so we think about evolution simply I've got it broken down into uh, three parts the first two parts are really quite easy and the third part, the higher level part, is a bit more difficult. My plan is to get finished with the standard level pieces before we leave for spring break next week. So think about this. Over the next two weeks, we're just going to do a couple of things. We're going to have a very good understanding of what natural selection is as well as having good understanding of, of various lines of evidence to support evolution by natural selection. The other thing that we need to do, and this is kind of an oddball one, but it's to understand classification of extant or living organisms. This, this is an, a piece of the IB curriculum that, that gets uh, shunted into the uh, basic evolution unit, and it's all super simple, but again, you need to know this stuff. You need to know that it's coming in May so you don't miss some easy questions. The other piece we'll handle after spring break, and that is the higher level uh, the higher level pieces of the evolution unit and you'll see more of this on the next screencast but uh, here are the four main pieces that we're getting into after spring break you're gonna have a good feel for what microevolution is that is how uh, population changes over time you're also gonna have a really good understanding of what macroevolution is and how one species can arise or diverge from another species and then once we understand macroevolution and microevolution, we can begin to talk about origins of life as well as origins of Homo sapiens and other primates, and then also talk about something called what I'm going to refer to as major adaptive radiations. That is the evolution of eukaryotic cells, the evolution of multicellularity, and then, of course, the evolution of vertebrates, which includes us. And we'll do that inside of a new way of thinking about biology probably for you guys and that is thinking about things phylogenetically not just classifying organisms based on what they look like but actually classifying organisms based on their phylogeny that is their evolutionary relationships uh, additionally we will get we'll briefly touch on an uh, a concept called systematics where we systematically catalog and classify organism organisms based on shared characteristics. Lots of fun, lots of words I realize, but man, this stuff is just is really, really cool. Cannot wait to get into it. The other side of the coin, my friends, as we prepare for the last unit, is really getting ready for May. And that's gonna that's gonna involve two things, you guys. Number one, getting ready for our AP exam, but also getting ready uh, for the IB exam, which as you guys know includes the IB portfolio and the IB internal assessments. Now, before I talk about the, the mock exam, I want to I want to make one thing absolutely positively clear. I am teaching an IB class. This is an IB class and my number one priority is ensuring that you are ready for your IB exams in May. Uh, and that's going to include getting this portfolio together and also getting ready for the IB exam. So in terms of getting that portfolio together, just a couple of things. Number one, primarily, if you're going to revise your last senior year 
bio IA, the one that I've already graded, those revisions are due on March the 17th. That is a week from today. I am not accepting anything after the 17th. Uh, if it's not in on Monday the 17th, it is not getting revised. I'll, that'll give me a few days to uh, grade the revised papers uh, before I leave for spring break. And then when we come back from spring break, we're going to catalog all the lab work that we've done this year and, and look again at the lab work you did last year with Dr. Shields. Uh, we'll put our two internal assessments into our portfolios, and then we will get those ready for submission to the uh, IB information system. Uh, that's all pretty complicated. This is the easier part, getting ready for the AP exam. I'm going to give you guys a mock exam. That's going to start this week uh, at the end of the week. The first part of the mock exam will be the multiple choice questions and the quantitative analysis. You'll have 90 minutes or an entire class period for that. And then the second piece will be the free response section, which you guys will also have an hour and a half or one class period to, uh, to complete. In addition to that, why give the test if we're not actually going to debrief the test? So somewhere around a week to two weeks after I administer the mock exam, we'll have an opportunity to look at our, your multiple choice scores as well as your FRQs or free response scores and see where you are and see where you really need to work for those of you that uh, well, we're all taking the AP exam for you guys that want to turn a 3 into a 4 or perhaps a 4 into a 5 you really need to focus on fine tuning what you know so get ready for that kind of two ends of this two two things we got to do talk about some really cool stuff in terms of evolution and then also uh, leave nothing on the uh, table we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cash in all our chips in terms of preparing for these end of course exams all right moving on to some of the uh the content the content the content how am i going to teach this unit well you're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about the green book i'm gonna use lots of videos and other uh short films and media to teach this stuff we'll be working with data sets and then i have got a few articles for the general public mainly national geographic but also some scientific american things that i'll be throwing at you the one thing i want you to look at is what's missing what's missing here is chap or are chapters from campbell now you guys know i love our textbook however our textbook is slightly out of date when it comes to teaching uh the new really cool stuff about evolution and natural selection. Also, it's getting late in the game to be going straight to the text. So the thing that we're going to be relying on mostly is the green book. The green book and the green book. So if you don't have a copy of this, you want to take pictures of this copy or you want to get with a friend who's got a copy or better yet, just bite the bullet and buy one and then sell it to a junior or a sophomore uh, at the end of the year. Now, get ready for this. There are 10 different pieces to the evolution unit that we're going to look at in the green book. Evidence for evolution, natural selection, and evolution in action. We're going to handle all three of these things before we take off for spring break. But when we come back for spring break, we've the majority of our work lays in front of us, so we've got to come strapped on and ready to get to work when we come to school. We're going to talk about species and speciation. That is how one species diverges uh, from another and becomes its own species. We'll look at some macro trends in evolution and then we'll we'll apply the idea of Hardy Weinberg and population genetics to these trends in evolution. That is we will investigate how evo how populations change uh, genetically over time. That is look at uh, how the genotype of a population changes over time and that of course well you don't know that it's of course but that is what drives evolution moving past those general ideas we'll start to apply uh, the ideas of speciation as well as overall trends in evolution to uh, the the branch of the evolutionary tree that is nearest and dearest to my heart that would be looking at human evolution that is a big time IB topic we'll also Looking at human evolution will give us an opportunity to uh, delve into the areas of phylogeny and systematics, and we will do what systematists do, which is to build cladograms and actually build phylogenetic trees. It's actually quite a bit of fun. And then as this unit wraps up, we'll go way, 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 way back in time, and we'll look at or we'll look at the best evidence and the best lines of thought that. Uh, 
help explain how life arose from non-life on this planet. Very interesting stuff. I want you to come with an open mind and, and, and be ready to understand that. So again, the green book is your friend. Go get a copy. In terms of videos and short film clips, ideally you're watching some right now online as I record this, but I'm giving, I've given you three examples of some of the videos we'll look at. We'll look at a video from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute called On the Origin of Species. Specifically, you guys will look at making of a theory and the beak of the finch on your own time. And then we'll look at lizards and the evolutionary tree in class and talk about, uh, we'll unpack some of the concepts that are described in that, in that little movie. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. It's pretty complex stuff. That's why I want to save that one for class. Get ready. That's, that's going to be an interesting day. We'll also spend some time looking at an old Nova special called Judgment Day or Intelligent Design on Trial. And the reason I bring that up is not just to make fun of intelligent design, but there are lots of really good two to four minute clips on uh, evidence for evolution. So we'll see Darwin and we'll also see the finches kind of as a reprise or a redux of short film looking at a at a pop gen of finches. We'll also meet an actor who's playing uh, a professor from Brown University and we'll look at some of the molecular evidence for evolution. And then last but certainly not least, we're going to spend a, a few minutes meeting uh, Dr. Neil Shubin from the University of Chicago and meeting his groundbreaking uh, discovery called Tiktaalik. And that actually spawned this book uh, called Your Inner Fish, which is a fantastic read and also coming out as a three-part uh, mini-series on PBS in April. So it could, timing couldn't be better. But uh, we're going we're gonna to meet Dr. Shubin, we're going to meet Tiktaalik, and what I think is real cool about that little piece is Dr. Shubin talks about evolution as a predictive science. That's interesting to me because I always think of evolution as a descriptive science, but you're going to see that turned around a little bit and see how you can actually pose hypotheses, make predictions, and then go test those hypotheses using evolutionary theory. It's very cool stuff. And then... Uh, Sometime after spring break, we'll watch another Nova special called Becoming Human. We'll look at that for several reasons. One, it's really cool to look at these other primates uh, that exist on planet Earth and also get to meet all the extinct members of our genus, Homo. Uh, there's a nice little short film about how bipedalism, or that is walking on two legs, arose. And so we'll meet some Harvard professors uh, who have been investigating that. And we'll also get to see one of my favorite things. You, you guessed it, monkey on a treadmill. And then uh, when my students watched this film last year, they really started to get a good understanding of what divergence is and what common ancestry is, and that's a big piece to understanding evolution. Uh, again, becoming human will help us do that. Next to that, what we'll be doing in class besides watching movies, we will be working with data, data, and more data. Several pieces to work with. We'll start this week looking at the Grant's Finch data, and then we'll get into mock exam stuff. Coming back from spring break, we're going to do three big data analysis labs. The first one being uh, Bean Bunny Evolution. That's a quick, quick little lab, but that gets us into actually building our own uh, population genetics models and testing the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium theory using Excel. We'll also have an opportunity to work with casts of human skulls, gorilla skulls, chimpanzee skulls, as well as casts of extant of extinct uh, members of our genus, Homo habilis, Homo australopithecus, uh, and then I also believe Homo neanderthalus. Some very cool stuff coming that way. And then the last activity we'll do before we wrap this whole unit and this whole year up is we will work with some molecular evidence and learn how to build cladograms and phylogenetic trees uh, for all sorts of animals. Not just We'll work with a group of invertebrates and we'll also work with a group of vertebrates that include primates and us as well. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep probing and pushing to find some good articles for the general public. National Geographic has published a lot of really good articles on Darwin, Darwinism, and also sort of the, the, the state of evolution now. It's not that the book is bad. It's just that these articles are better. They're an easier read. They're a more interesting, engaging read. And I think you'll learn everything. You'll, it'll, it'll help you learn and review everything you need to know for the IB exam. So that's what's coming your way over the next eight weeks. I am really looking forward to it. Um, 
the one last thing I'll say is you need to come to class rested, prepared, and ready to go.